Greetings, fellow Watford fans. Omar here, and it's time for another edition of the Yuan's 10-Minute Take on Watford 1, Sunderland 0. That's right, you heard it correctly. Watford have won a game in the championship at Vicarage Road, and they saved it until the very last game at the Vic this particular championship season. That's right. It had been five months, five months, since the last time Watford had won a game at home in the championship, that was back in late November, around the 28th of November or thereabouts, against Norwich City coming from 2-0 down to win 3-2. And then five months passed by before Watford would win another championship game at the Vic. And that came today against the Sunderland side, who really had a number of chances to put this game away a lot earlier than Watford scored. Because Sunderland, 3 Point blank range chances in one on one, and for the life of me, how they didn't score. Well, maybe there was a higher power involved. If you believe in higher power, then you might have appreciated this game today because Sunderland were on the front foot, had the lion's share of the chances, had more shots on target, had more shots overall, but could not find the back of the net. This Watford side did not play particularly well in the first half. In fact, they seem to have a lack of an edge to them in this game. Now, they had a lot of energy, but they didn't have a finishing touch. That's something that's been a problem for Watford in recent years. And under Tom Cleverley, the last couple of games, it's really become, become very clear that the finishing touch is what Watford have been lacking. Sunderland, though, were lacking one of their own, and that's why they didn't score in this game. But Watford, courtesy of a sublime pass by... Kone, who I thought was brilliant today in midfield, sublime ball by him, found the on-rushing Ryan Andrews, who latched onto it, and really, first-time fashion, didn't think about this. He just did it and just lashed the ball into the bottom uh, left-hand corner of the net in front of the rookery, past the Sunderland goalkeeper, 1-0 Watford, and that was your game there. Though Watford had some anxious moments it was Daniel Batman to the rescue on several occasions before and after that Watford goal. And he manned the Watford goal beside the goal that was scored. He manned the Watford goal very well. It seems that since Daniel Batman has returned to the side, he is, his confidence has returned. His authority and goal has returned. Although there were some uh, nervy moments in this game when he was playing out from the back. He was really testing and tempting fate. Some of the Sunderland players got very, very close to him before he just managed to release the ball right past them. It was a very close run thing. And I was hoping that Daniel Batman would not give the ball away. And he didn't, true to his word. He managed to play out from the back quite well. But it was nervy. It was a nervy spectacle at times. But look, Daniel Batman made some outstanding saves to keep Sunderland off the scoreboard. And it was not an easy game for him because he was being peppered by a lot of Sunderland shots. There was a moment where he decided to go out a goal when he was being charged down. And then he decided not to come and went back to his goal. And then the Watford defense time after time bailed him out. But there were times where he really had to save the team's bacon. And so Daniel Batman really regaining that form that kept him in as the number one goalkeeper in the first place, playing with a lot more authority and confidence in this game. And he was one also of the major reasons why Watford were able to hold on for the three points that they got today. As I said, definitely Kone was a key part of this with his contributions in midfield. He orchestrated things quite well there. It was just getting that ball over in the final pass. But the link-up play was better today from Watford, even though there were opportunities missed in terms of passing missed, Balls over hit. Happened several times, especially in the first half. It got a little bit better, a bit more disciplined in the second half. But it was also that man, Ryan Andrews, one of our own. The man from Watford himself. And of course, also the son of the former Watford man, Wayne Andrews, who got the job done. He came in as a sub to start the second half at Ryan Andrews, and he looked the part and was the part. Had a lot of energy about him. Had a bit about him today, Ryan Andrews. He was up for it, and he was up to make a difference, and he did, up to doing that, and he did it well, and made an instant impact, was very influential, was charging down that right side as the right wing back, looking very dangerous indeed, and was very good in this game. Man of the match, obviously, for me, the Union was man of the match, but his contributions to the game were very much a key to the way the game ended up and turned out, and of course, 
he himself, scoring that decisive goal in the 64th minute. That's his third goal of the season. He had also scored, by the way, back on January 1st against Plymouth Argyle in an absolutely wild game um, that took place on that day, back on the 1st of this year. And I think he scored perhaps in 2023 as well. I'm forgetting which game it was, but he did. And those were the three games he scored in for Watford this season. I thought that Watford grew into the game second half, moved the ball a little bit faster, had a bit more about them, looked very good going forward at times in that second half as they were facing the rookery end, attacking that end. And some of the possession play was good. They built up possession, I think, quite well at, in spells but did not have the Lions share the possession by the end of the game. I think they were end, end up around 46% or so, maybe a bit lower than that, maybe even 42% uh, by a game's end. But the fact of the matter is, is that Watford finished the game out. Good defending in the low block. When Sunderland came in, they were denied by some effective pieces of defending and blocking from Watford. Matty Pollock, I thought, did very well. And also Wesley Hurt made some good clearances and key moments in the game. I think the team chipped in to make this a team effort by the way they defended in the last few minutes of the game. And Watford got over the line and saw themselves through. And I thought that that was, look, it wasn't the greatest performance, but it was in some ways a microcosm of the entire season at the Vic. The ups, the downs, the roller coaster rides, and just enough, despite not playing well, to somehow get some points. In fact, Really, of uh, this season, there were six wins at the Vic this season in the championship, looking back at the Watford season at the Vic. And really, this win was the one that was the most important one, I would say, even more important than the 4-0 win that began the season. So there was a sense of symmetry. Um, Watford jump-started their season with a 4-0 win at the Vic against Queen's Park Rangers, who have since decided to stay in the championship. And at the end of the season at the Vic, Watford win 1-0 over Sunderland. So there is a symmetry. Two different managers uh, in this season for Watford, which is actually one less than they had in each of the prior two seasons. Can you name all six without looking them up? And this was a game that Watford didn't play well in, but it was one that they can certainly build on for the next game against Middlesbrough, which will be the last of the season. And of course, for next season at the Vic, because Watford have to take this feeling build on it, improve on it, get new players in, recruits who are going to complement the pieces that are already here, the focal points that are already here. And you'll know you'll go into next season with Tom Cleverley at the helm for a full season, we hope. And make sure that you augment his staying at the bit with some players who are going to push this team forward to the next phase of where they should be. I think the recruiting is going to be key, obviously. Jack Greaves needs to be sticking around and getting some more time. He got some time today. Um, wasn't effective. He really didn't have much of the ball to be effective in any game phase. But the bottom line is, is that he got his feet wet. And for me, that's the most important thing. And you need to bring him out there again for the game against Middlesbrough. Start to develop the youth um, as the academy is doing a really good job of that these days. And so Tom Cleverley, I think, will bring in more of that youth brigade in the pipeline coming up the next game against Middlesbrough. But I thought today overall, you know, Bio was busy. Dennis was ineffective. He came off um, at halftime, I think, uh, thereabouts. And um, look, the bottom line is that I don't think Emmanuel Dennis will be back next season. And I don't think that Yasser Espria will be back either. He, of course, won young player of the season, deservedly so today. Wesley Hook winning the Graham Taylor Watford FC player of the season. I don't think most Watford fans were surprised by that. Um, and although my pick was Ben Hamer, uh, Wesley Hurt, let's face it, has played the lion's share of the games. And so it would be difficult, realistically speaking, to expect a, a player who only played maybe 21 or 22 games out of a 46-game season to be player of the season, realistically so. But I do think that Ben Hamer was a really key difference maker in that stretch of 20-odd games where Watford, after the 2-0 loss to Sunderland back in October, really began to steady the ship and lost just three different times in a 22 or so game stretch. Ben Hamer was integral to that stretch. And so that's why I call him the player of the season, even though he didn't play nearly all the games like Wesley Hood did, who missed just two games the entire season. And those are just due to suspension. 
But the bottom line is, is that those were your award winners. Goal of the season also went to Wesley Hope. The goal that he scored, the outrageous goal he scored against Hull City to give Watford the win away from home there back in, I think, October or November. A goal scored from inside his half, just like the previous goal of the season, the previous season that, uh, of course, Ismail Assar scored. But Yasser Espria will be off to greener pastures. I think that's almost certain, almost certain now that he will come the offseason. I expect a Premier League club to snap his services up. You know, never know where he might go, whether it's the likes of Newcastle or Brighton or Liverpool or whomever. You never know. But someone in the Premier League will be all the better for having his services next season. Leicester City will be in the Premier League. Maybe he'll go there since Leicester City got promoted. But Watford will be looking at promotion, at least, I think, in the next one to three seasons. I really support the idea of Tom Cleverley building and being allowed to build. The owner of this team, I've said this a million times, has got to allow the manager to build. And if you do that, you will have a foundation in place where you position yourself for future success. Watford got themselves positioned for future success by platforming the future with this 1-0 win today against Sunderland, ending five months without one at the Vic in the championship. This has been the New Orleans 10-minute take.